Hi, in this video, we're going to be covering how to uh, calculate an ANOVA statistical test, as well as how to construct the uh, bar graph with error bars that go with it. Now, I've already covered how to um, input data and how to construct a table in other videos. So I'm going to start this video with um, data already cut and pasted in and the mean and standard deviation already calculated. The um, ANOVA test has to be used to compare two or more uh, groups. Uh, so if your depend, or excuse me, your independent variable is uh, nominal or ordinal data, okay. So we've got four groups. This is the same research question as in the t-test. We're comparing the mass of these four different seed types to see is there any difference significantly between them. So in order to calculate ANOVA, this is the first time we're not actually going to use a formula like we've been using in previous videos. Instead, um, what we need to do is go under the data ribbon, and then there should be an icon here that says data analysis. Now I've turned mine off because that's the default setting. Yours may be on already, but if it's not, how we put that icon there is to go over to File, and we're going to scroll down to the bottom to Options. Okay, and under Options, we're going to go to Add-ins. So this is an add-in that's always there on Excel. Just for some reason, they don't turn them on right away. So make sure down here where it says Manage, you want to click, make sure it says Excel Add-ins and click Go. And then we're going to turn on the Analysis Tool Pack. And then what you should see happen right there, we have data analysis. So what we're going to do next is calculate the ANOVA. Okay, now that we have that data analysis turned on, what we're going to do is um, select data analysis. And then you're going to see this list of different um, options for you to choose from. You'll see there's t-test here, but if you want uh, more detail, you could use uh, one of those rather than the t-test formula that we did before. Um, you can also make histograms with this, um, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to select the ANOVA single factor and click OK. And then in the input range box, okay, I'm going to select my four different seed masses. Now for the ANOVA, what you're going to be selecting is your raw data. We don't want to um, put the mean or the standard deviation in there at all because that would affect our output. Okay, and then we want to tell it our data is grouped in columns. So we have four distinct columns and there are no labels in the first row because I didn't select the first row. If you had selected the first row, then you would want to check that box. Now down here, this is the alpha level. Um, we talked about this under t-test. Um, this is what you want your probability level to be below in order to test for statistical significance. Uh, we're going to leave it at 0.05 because that's the standard for now, although there's some debate over it. Um, but for your IA and what IB is looking for from you is just simply the 0.05 level. So leave that, uh, leave that alone. And then you'll have the option to put it on a certain output or to put it on a new worksheet. Um, I like to put it over here next to my data. So I'll have, have output range and um, I'm going to select G2 just because it's in line with my data here. And I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see all of your ANOVA um, information. Um, here is the p-value that you need to interpret down here. Um, so remember the e means times 10 to the, so this is below that 0.05 um, threshold. So this is considered a statistically significant difference between these four groups, which makes sense because if you think about the seeds, a pinto bean is kind of a, a large seed. Um, you know, you could see it when you eat chili versus a zinnia seed is teeny tiny. It's, it's a little wisp of a seed, um, barely weighs anything at all. So it does make sense there would be significance found here. This will also, between your columns, you can go and rename those if you would like. Um, it will tell you 
some uh, descriptive statistics about it. So it gives you the average and it gives you the variance. So you can also double check your formulas by looking here. They're not rounded, of course. If you would like to change these from column one, column two, whatever, you can just click that and type the equals sign and then select the cell you want it to be equal to. So, and then Zinnia pops up here. And if I were to ever change Zinnia, it would be connected here. So I can also type equals sunflower, equals lentils, equals pento beans. Okay, and then there you have it, your labels there. Uh, as you scroll down, you do need to report all of these values on your IA or on your science fair board. Um, the degrees of freedom, you covered that in math. Okay, we're looking for the 36, 36 for the, um, the IA because we're going within the groups. Um, the F value, this is, so in the t-test, we calculated a t-value and then in the olden days, you compared that to a critical t-value on a table to determine was there significance. With the ANOVA, it's an F value and here's the F critical value so you can provide those as context for your um, statistical analysis, but the p-value is the one that you are going to interpret. Now to graph this information, It'll be the same as we did for the t-test. So we want to, uh, this is our x, this is our y value. So we want to left click, hold and drag to select all four of those means. And we're going to go up to insert to the chart and this is going to be a bar chart. And just the simplest one. Now my bar chart's kind of large and it's covering my data. So I'm going to just drag it down. Drag it down, there we go. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so it fits on the screen. And remember, you've got to insert the axes titles and the um, chart title. And you would just do that by cutting and pasting. So this one's going to be the mass of the seeds there. And this is going to be, I hope I didn't cut, I didn't put a proper label on this table, but this is going to be seed species. And then my chart is going to be um, mass of seed species up here. And then to uh, change these data labels here, I'm going to click so that they're selected. I'm actually going to double click. There we go. So then my chart tools up here is selected and I want to go to the select data option just like we did before and over here on horizontal category axis labels i'm going to edit that and then i'm going to select in order left click hold and drag where i have my labels and now you'll see all the labels are there and if we scroll back down to our graph there's our labels and we still need to add our error bars and the label telling us what the error bars are so in this class, error bars are always going to represent a standard deviation. They don't always in other, other courses or other, uh, in other applications, but for this class, it'll be standard deviation. I'm just gonna make that smaller. Back to center. And then we need to add the error bars. We do not wanna add a trend line. This is not a line graph. Okay, so add the error bars, but remember that Excel doesn't program them properly, so we need to program the error bars to match up with our calculated standard deviation. So we're gonna click more options, make sure you have the direction both selected, cap selected on InStyle, and then we're gonna go to custom. And you'll notice that the graph is changing in response to what we're doing. So under custom, you're gonna select here and delete. So under positive error value, we're going to tell it left click, hold and drag to select all the standard deviations. So we're saying go up by one standard deviation. I'm going to delete this in the negative error value and do the same thing. Left click, hold and drag to grab the uh, standard deviations again to tell it to go down by those standard deviations and close that. And now we have error bars that reflect each of these groups. And you can see here there that yes there is a statistically significant difference that the error bars do not overlap and in fact the means of these seeds are quite quite different 